The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. What is going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tommy O'Brien. He actually will be joining us at uh, 9.30 at the open. Let's take a look at where we're at right now. Of course, this is pre-market. We have the E-mini uh, about sideways, off about 0.18%. Uh, the Russell Futures up about, or excuse me, off about 0.42. NQ's almost completely flat here. Dow Futures down about 0.23%. Now, of course, in, in the Dow, we'd hit 40,000, and that is a big psychological uh, move. You know, it kind of indicates the bears, are in, or excuse me, the bulls are in control in a sense, and we have a minor pullback. Uh, below that 40,000, but that was kind of to be expected when you make uh, all-time highs like that. The gold contract at 2414. Again, this continues uh, to, to move up through this year. Uh, now we're off from the high of 2452, but again, you know, when you make these major highs, you can sometimes get pullback, and this is on somewhat decreasing volume. Silver still at 3195 moving closer to that 32 level again off from 3275 and then copper back down again from the all-time highs as well that we made at 519 we're trading at 491 right now crude oil continues to come down at 7790 now there's some conversation around inflation essentially putting off people's summer plans in a way right so travel kind of demands decrease and this is what the Fed was kind of trying to do, not necessarily hit vacations or whatever, or travel, but the idea of just decreasing demand for certain things, and some of the analysts are suggesting that this is causing a decrease in the price of crude oil. You know, I think there is such a multifaceted issue that, yeah, I even saw a headline saying that the, uh, the death of the Iranian president is causing these lower prices. Well, we know that these have actually been sustained for quite a while, and, uh, so I think it's hard to pinpoint one exact thing. What it is, you know, what, what can be said is that supply is is massive right now. Uh, I think we're still waiting on OPEC to see what they're going to do. That that will come out in June. Um, they will probably just try to meet demand at a certain level. And then, of course, the U.S. is pumping a ton of gas and oil. Let's take a look. We have Tesla down about 1.9, uh, trading at 183.05. Then Steel Dynamics. Of course, we don't have any data since we were pre-opened, and then that dollar uh, below the 105 level, um, trading at 105. Uh, excuse me, 104.79. But we are reapproaching that 105. Let's see if we test it, and if we can get a rejection at 105, that's nice, and we can probably see the market go higher as well. And uh, from some news today, we had Nvidia coming out, and this will be for uh, the quarter ending in April here. Let me try to get it up. So what we're looking for essentially, and this is the agreed upon uh, kind of consensus on Wall Street here, uh, looking at about 514 a share. So if we can get that um, or even a little bit higher. It'll be good for the market as a whole. I get concerned with things like NVIDIA. This is such a juggernaut company, right? I mean, we're trading at 957. It's nearly a thousand bucks a share. Uh, let me see if I can put this back on like just even three years. I mean, look, right? We're trading in the low 100s here in 2022. Of course, we get a leg up, and then and then really this meteoric rise uh, up to that 974 area. We come back down, and then we're trying to test those highs again. Uh, I, I think probably it will be in line with estimates which will be fine, and it won't send the stock much higher, everything. It, it, this is already, you know, in my opinion, this is priced in for a few years from now, right? Um, the major limiting factor now on these chip companies and, you know, by extension, AI companies is going to be time to scale to these levels. The investors are realizing that this is so important for the future, right? So large language models and the things that power those large language models and uh, so they correctly recognize that and they buy in and we, we see price prices at 957, right? And the answer is, you know, to what time is that actually realized in, in the financials? And I think this is a few years out. And so again, what, what I'm trying to say 
is that you know, essentially the, the limiting factor of how much higher the stock can go is going to be till they can build out really this massive infrastructure that is going to support uh, these, these large neural networks. And that in and of itself, in my opinion, can get a little sketchy too in the sense, like say we're like five, six, ten years out, uh, of course NVIDIA will continue to go up and everything like that. But if we get a few, you know, bumps along the way, does NVIDIA get sent lower, right? Like if the next year outlook on AI um, isn't as good as it is now, does NVIDIA get sent a lot lower? And then by extension, does the market get sent a lot lower? You know, th this is some of the issues you can run into, I guess, when you have stocks like this that are so dominant, right? Uh, and of course, we can't always control the outcomes of, uh, you know, projects. So that's kind of my thought on it. Uh, I think we will beat today. I don't know what the forward guidance will be, and that's obviously going to be um, extremely important as well. Uh, what I also wanted to talk about, I think Tom spoke about it uh, maybe yesterday, but this company Hims, okay? So they're a telehealth company, but in reality, they <laughs> they just sell kind of off-brand goods. So I know um, they do like off-brand Viagra and Cialis. And r what's really cool about this company is they're able to take those compounds and just brand it on their own, right? So, I mean, anyone can go online. They, they have plenty of these websites where you can, you know, things like Amino Asylum, uh, I can't think of the other one right now for some reason, but you can buy a lot of these compounds, right? And they're very cheap. Hims figured that out and they're getting it from the source and they're making their own products. Well, what they're doing now as well is selling GLP-1 drugs. So these are very similar, or they are similar in the same exact family as things like Wagovi and Ozempic. Um, and so these are glucogen-like peptide ones, they work by triggering insulin release, reducing glu glucose production in your liver, and make you feel full, and ideally that decreases um, weight over a long term. Obviously, Ozempic's making a bunch of money on this. Um, Wagovi has made it Trulicity. What else is this? Victoza. I didn't realize how many of these GLP-1 drugs existed. Now, of course, they're being used um, for diabetes in the past, and now they're just being approved uh, for weight loss. Manjaro, obviously, Zepbound. I mean, it, it's pretty nuts. So these guys are going to come in and be able to compete in a major way. This is sending some of the stocks a lot lower. Uh, it is just a fascinating company that they're able to kind of tune into that, right, and then make a more affordable option and then really brand it that way, right? Especially in the realm of men's health. I think, you like, you know, speak for a lot of guys as well on this where it's not super comfortable talking about anything related to our health. You know, and so Hims has done it in a way, uh, in my opinion, that's accessible and uh, it, it looks good. You know, I think this is a pretty cool company. Now we're down 3.9, excuse me, 3.19 percent right now, um, but that's probably to be expected a little bit after massive volume to the upside. Yeah, I mean the downside on that day yesterday is not uh, you know extreme at all. The, the wick is huge up here, so. Anyways, I find that really cool along these lines, right? And I, I liken this to what I was saying a few years ago with uh, pot stocks, right? Instead of buying the pot stocks, why don't you buy things surrounding the pot stocks, right? So the machines, the pesticides, or whatever is used. So Nestle has also done this, and they're actually launching a food line that is targeting Ozempic and really GLP-1 users. Uh, super fascinating. We'll talk a little bit about that when we get back from the break. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. This portion of the morning market kickoff is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tommy O'Brien. He will be with us uh, after the next break. Before we went to break, we were talking about hims and hers, right? They're releasing a new GLP-1 drug. Uh, this is in the same line as like Wagovi and Ozempic and everything, right? So then what I was talking about afterwards is that Nestle is trying to identify themselves with this medication in the sense that they are providing a new food line designed, and I use air quotes, for people on this medication. And this is super interesting, and I think it gives us a little insight too into kind of what this general consumer market is like. And I have seen some stuff similar in the idea that there's this almost like min-maxing going on. So I, let's just say, let's go through this, right? So it's like, I work out and since I work out, I wear these clothes. And since I wear these clothes, I go and do this thing and this thing. There's this very weird like click identity forming in a, in a lot of different ways. We have very strong and outlined subcultures in America Obviously, I don't think taking weight loss medication, you know, corresponds or, you know, relates to being a subculture. But the, the point is, is that people like to compartmentalize a lot of their interests and they do similar things to kind of create some continuity in it. And so if I'm taking these weight loss drugs, why even think about anything else where I just eat this food? I eat Vital Pursuit brand or something similar that will be competitive in it, right? But tailoring it to this kind of behavior of people is uh, super interesting, especially on this kind of new front of GLP-1 users. I say GLP-1 users like they're whatever. The point is people who use GLP-1. So Nestle is launching a line of food products tailored to people using weight loss medication in an effort to capitalize on a market expected to reach 30 billion in the next six years. Under its new Vital Pursuit brand, the global food giant plans to launch 12 products ranging from frozen protein pasta, sandwich melts, and pizzas, all of which are made with a higher amount of protein and essential nutrients like iron, vitamin A, and potassium. This stuff already exists. It already exists. They've been doing this for, I mean, as long as I have been up late at night watching ads on TV, 
you, you know, so it's this idea again of like rebranding everything and compartmentalizing it into this kind of lifestyle thing. So it's the first time the company known for brands like DiGiorno Pizza and Nesquik, okay, created a food brand that's specifically intended for glucogen-like peptide one users. If surge in popularity in recent years, Yeah, they, okay, so then the question is, what? how is it intended for GLP-1 users? It's just less units and slightly less calories. But it's like, again, we, we already have that. It's, it's a super interesting rebranding of this to kind of fit in. Uh, earlier this month, Novo Nordisk turns Fox Business that at least 25,000 Americans are beginning treatment with Wagovi each week, and that figure is growing intense. Uh, by 2030, the number of GLP-1 users in the U.S. could reach 30 million, around, you know, yeah, 9% of the overall population. Uh, this market is projected to exceed 100 billion by the same year, driven equally by diabetes and obesity usage. Uh, as the use of medications to support weight loss continues to rise, we see an opportunity to serve those consumers. And there is a chance, obviously, that the use of this, you know, goes exponential. You know, we still deal with obesity and obesity-related uh, diseases in this com uh, country. So you said for five bucks, that's crazy. The products for five bucks, but the prices may vary by retailer. Yeah, so I, you know, the way I see the long term, of course, they're just kind of like projecting this, you know, in a linear fashion, I guess. But you know, I think as we, you know, continue to proceed, right? We don't have any. Uh, yeah, big societal controls, I think, on, you know, overeating and sedentary lifestyles. Of course, I think that's changing a little bit with young people. And there is a level of, like, social peer pressure on social media to do these things. Um, but still, we have a vast amount of the population that are a lot older um, who do deal with obesity. And obviously, these drugs were, um, you, you know, certified or whatever to be used um, in the case that people have, like, let's say, like heart disease or something else caused by obesity as well. And this just expands the amount of people that can get access to this, especially through things, you know, like Medicare. Um, so interesting. I, I'm interested to see how this works for Nestle. Uh, again, I, I do think it's kind of tags on to this thing where it's like it's just easier not to try to think about what to do. If I'm on Ozempic, why not just buy, you know, Vital uh, Pursuit because it's designed for that. And that's what I think Nestle is really trying to get into. And I think that's an interesting idea. It'll be interesting to see how that works out for them. Okay, I want to talk a little bit. I was actually uh, talking with one of my friends yesterday. She was trying to learn how to start investing, uh, which was cool. And we were just talking about general, you know, things that are going on in the economy. You know, what we talk about on here and like when I fill in. Uh, I was speaking, you know, okay, one which was interesting is... Uh, I learned that they have HELOC credit cards, which is super bizarre. And I don't want to talk too much onto that because I'd I like to get a little bit more information, but I keep getting these ads, right? It's a card and apparently it access some, you know, home equity line of credit, which is weird. And I'm not sure if that is a normal thing or a new thing, uh, but it got me thinking that there's some interesting and kind of like voodoo ways of, of, of getting people access to money, uh, especially in an economy right now where people are running out of money they have. And they have, uh, I think the average American we were talking about, uh, I think Friday, has over $6,000 in credit card debt and more people than ever are defaulting on that debt. All right. This is from Bloomberg here. It's released today. We were talking about the buy now, pay later. Uh, one of the interesting things about buy now, pay later is that it is not usually included in any kind of credit report, right? So these companies that are offering these, you know, buy now, pay laters aren't reporting the amount of debt they own, what's defaulting. Uh, to, uh, you know, to regulators. This is, in itself, creates, honestly, like another economy in a sense, right? And we don't know what's going on. So there's this kind of shadow stuff going on. And I think that impacts um, decisions being made. If we think everything's kosher in an economy because of the information and data we're getting, but then reality, there's this massive segment of it that's essentially, you know, a black hole, and it turns out, wow, no, no, people are actually defaulting in a, in a heavy way on these buy now, pay laters. And it shows that people don't have enough money. You know, I, I can see the, the, the call for regulation. So this, this article is saying buy now, pay later needs credit card-like oversight. This is a CFPB. 
Uh, buy now, pay later lenders such as Block, Afterpay, Affirm Holdings, and Klarna Bank should be treated the same way like credit card providers. The U.S. Consumer Financial Protection Bureau published a new interpretation of existing laws and regulations on Wednesday to make clear that, like credit card providers, BNPL firms must in, uh, investigate disputes, refund return products, or avoided services, and provide billing statements. And it's not even, I was just talking about, you know, the need to have this for uh, accurate you know, data and then to be able to make accurate conclusions. But this is another thing as well. I mean, a lot of these BNPLs uh, have insane interest rates, right? I mean, they're, they're like pawn shop level interest rates. And the question is, you know, what happens if they don't pay? Does that get sent off to debt collectors? Probably does. This can be a nightmare for people. It, it really can't. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back with Tommy O'Brien. Tigers, you've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side by side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tigers Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side by side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kickstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate, interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tommy O'Brien. But in fact, we are joined by Tommy O'Brien. Tommy, how are you doing? Jacob, good morning. Uh, I'm doing well, and I'm ready for some NVIDIA earnings this evening. I How about know. yourself? I heard you talking about it as you kicked off the program, man. Great start to the show. Appreciate you filling in, as always. And, yeah, it'll be an interesting one to totally. see where um, that company leads the market this evening as they're kind of the final final. Um, like the final stick to drop, almost. I guess, you know, yeah. as we see where those tech earnings go, man. Yes. Um, 
the one thing I was going to mention, I was just reading a Bloomberg article this morning just talking about, of course, NVIDIA. And the headline out there is, let me get it real quick. What is their headline on this article? Uh, the final hurdle, there you go, of That's mega right. tech earnings victory lap, as it's been quite a decent earnings season. The one thing I found interesting here, just talking about the historical perspective of where they've been, four consecutive quarters of NVIDIA earnings that have blown past Wall Street investors. When you look at the previous stock performance on those, you had a 0.1% gain. You had a negative 2.5% gain, and then you had a 16% acceleration to the upside um, <laughs> on the last three reports. So you have an implied day after earnings move of about 8% right now. Oh. What I did see in the same article is that the premium for calls has disappeared in the last couple months, which is kind of interesting because there yes. had been a premium for calls versus the premium for puts. Talking about market bullish sentiment, uh, that premium is gone which is interesting and you know how many times can you really price in a company like that crushing the world i think they're at a either 2.3 or 2.5 trillion dollar market cap right now um yes yeah at some point you know expectations sky high can they really continue i mean think about how much future growth is already priced into that right. equity right and that's what i find myself saying you know maybe this is an opportunity i'm going to look at potentially um just throwing around some trade ideas you know you got an eight percent move and boy i don't know if i would ever be in there shorting a company like that longer term yeah they're probably going to deliver but how long is that longer term going to take but i did find myself right. saying you know you got eight percent in there you got so much expectation to the upside maybe you sell a call spread something like that maybe you look for because you know you have eight percent to the upside already priced in i don't know just just talking big picture man but boy you talk about expectations um i think the number <laughs> is two billion dollars getting into where they've been i think they've continued to beat by about two billion dollars one analyst in here talking about to avoid a sell-off the company will have to top profit and sales estimates by 15 percent you know random anecdotal evidence one one analyst i don't even know who he is david miller of catalyst funds um yeah and then you have seen nvidia has beaten its revenue forecast by about two billion dollars in each of the past two quarters uh morgan stanley analyst joseph moore expects a similar performance i mean so think about it right they just don't have to beat they have to crush it out of the yes. park all the expectations are and they have to beat the estimates that are just mammoth numbers bigger than where they were prior. Um, some of the other numbers, yeah, what do we have? I think they're up revenue-wise. I mean, I, I couldn't keep track of all these numbers, Jacob. I was trying to get it ready. Yeah, here we go. So in the fiscal first quarter, NVIDIA is projected to deliver earnings of $13.2 billion on sales of $24.7 billion. <laughs> that number is up 544% and 243% respectively from a year ago. And then you add to it that they need to beat that by $2 billion. They need to beat it by 15% just to even avoid a sell-off. So, boy, those are sky-high numbers. Totally. But as we've seen, they continue to deliver. So we get to find out tonight. Pretty interesting. Yeah. Definitely. And, and you know, that's what I was saying as well when I was talking about it in the beginning, right? I mean, this – a few years from now, this is priced in. It is when do they, when do they realize the price, right? I think a lot of people have – already purchased a lot of chips from them, at least when we're building out in a massive way. Still That's waiting on money, I think, from those companies to buy more chips, energy solutions to those kind of things. No doubt NVIDIA is here to stay in a major way. I, I think they're going to be, you know, one of the crown jewels in this kind of AI deal. Um, but exactly as you're saying, it's like when, you know, when does that come to fruition? When does the price start relating to what they're doing? And I think that's the major issue that we could have with NVIDIA going forward over the next, let's say, year. I think they'll probably beat today and get pretty close to crushing, but there's going to be a slowdown inevitably. This isn't going to just be an exponential increase, right? There's going to be time periods where these companies have already bought enough of the chips, right? We're not going to buy every new one. I don't know. This is kind of my thought. No, it's it. great thought, man. It made me think of, you know, you have Meta, right? Zuckerberg. He's on a mission to conquer the world, of course, in the right. future of the metaverse, AI, whatever, whatever it be. Um, in January, you had Zuckerberg announcing via Instagram that Meta is going to purchase 350,000 of those H100 AI chips yes. by the end of the year. They're between 20 and 40,000 apiece. And so you make the great point. Are they going to do the same thing by the end of next year? Probably right. not. That's already priced into the equity. I mean, what what is? I mean, how how much was that? It's you know, it's billions. It's like ten billion or hundred billion. What was that? Three hundred fifty thousand, even on the lower end, times twenty thousand. 
That's seven billion dollars. Yeah, so I think it was like ten billion dollars, seven to ten billion dollars. They're going to spend themselves on Nvidia, and I just went over that revenue for the entire company first quarter projected to be twenty four point seven billion. You have Facebook saying that they alone are going to buy three hundred fifty thousand of those H one hundreds, which at the lower end of twenty thousand dollars a pop, and maybe they got less than that. Hopefully they did. If you're buying three hundred fifty thousand right. of them for a little volume <laughs> right. discount, um, but at twenty thousand, that's seven billion dollars. I don't think you need to – and this is where I don't know enough, right? Maybe you do. Maybe this is what's going to be so interesting, right? What happens if in 12 to 18 months their next chip is just that good that you got to buy them all again? I don't know. Maybe that's – you know, that's that's the risk, I think, if you try and make those plays. That yes. That is where they may actually exceed growth. If they're able to, and technology is exponential growth, man, I always say it's very difficult for human beings to um, kind of understand exponential growth because it's so quick, you know, right. as in maybe they will need to upgrade those chips at a faster pace than we actually all can consider. And maybe by the time they use them, you got to upgrade them in the next 12 or 18 months. Or guess what? You're using outdated chips. And in the world of AI, if you're not in the forefront, you're gone, man. Yeah, that's valid. That's that's valid as well. Um, yeah. But I agree. You know, it's it's it's. Uh, what would happen to MetaShares, right? If they make that announcement that they're buying 350000 by the end of the year and Zuckerberg comes out next January and says the same exact thing for their next chips that they announce a year later. I mean, I don't know. Well, and, you, you know, know it, would be, it would be nerve-wracking as an investor, I think, right? Because we're yeah. still not at full expansion of, yeah. you know, having, let's just say, systems that can add into, like, an AI neural network. And so the idea is, like, say we have 10,000 systems now, or, or, you know, whatever, 350,000 systems now. We're buying at this price point, and then next year we need to build out to six hundred thousand. And then you see what I'm saying? So now you buy the oh, new yeah. chip for six hundred thousand to you know replace you know three hundred fifty, and then the next two fifty that are new. Yep. This is where it gets really scary, and it, in my opinion, it can kind of become a race to the bottom, right? Because this AI won't be hyper profitable just yet. We still need some time. These LLMs are developing. We're still figuring out how this can fit into daily business. And I mean, we yeah. don't we don't even have AIs yet that are tailored to certain businesses, which, in my opinion, is where we're going. You know, so this is yeah. where the companies need to be careful. I, I see what you're saying. And I think that that, you know, could be valid. And if I were a chip maker, I would try to make my best chip, the, my new one. Oof, can you that's imagine? what needs to be right. used, you know. You know, it is. I find myself using ChatGPT so much more than Google, which is interesting. Right. Yeah. But I don't see any ads when I use ChatGPT. It's interesting. So, how how does that you know and that's one of the discussions it's like okay how are you going to serve ads when it's a completely different interface that's not really tailored to the same way that google so how does that deliver when you're talking about for profitability etc for sure absolutely well tommy stay right there we'll be right back sounds good are you ready to take charge of your financial future tfnn is your gateway to the world of trading and investing whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school. 
taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Jacob Shoup and Tommy O'Brien. Tommy, what else are we looking at? So, Jacob, do you do any shopping at Target? I do sometimes. I do sometimes. I'm interested to hear what's going on with Target. I've, I've heard some rumblings online about some things. So Yeah, they got some issues this morning, man. So with their numbers, they're down by 8.5% mm. this morning, trading from 155 to 142. Um, that follows Walmart, which crushed it out of the park. And it's especially interesting because from a user experience, right, I've talked about it many times in this program. I love Target. It kind of serves as Tommy and I's Toys R Us of a new generation. Um you're probably too young yourself, Jacob, to remember, but Toys R Us, man, used to be Romper Room. Um, in terms of just uh, a good experience, right? Toys everywhere. You can go there with the kids. They got a good experience, et cetera. They don't exist anymore. And so I would take Tommy occasionally, right? We went around the toy section. Maybe he gets a $10 toy. The other day, I let him choose one toy. He chose a Spider-Man. Um, it was $10. But in general, everybody is hyper aware right now of costs and so i belong to sam's club which is walmart that's out here in lakeland they don't have costco or naros they have costco out in tampa maybe i'd choose them if i had a closer location um but i find myself doing a tremendous amount of shopping at walmart at sam's very little shopping at target if i can avoid it and i think um higher prices has made us all hyper aware of what's going on and target's paying the price man and i'm not yep. the only one you know walmart is bringing in higher pay consumers in terms yes. of you know people who it, it makes sense folks they're the yeah. same exact products and many times now you don't even have to go to the store and that's the biggest step up right that you can just order it it gets delivered so walmart used to catch a lot of grief over the user experience they still do to a certain accord man there's no way i don't enjoy that experience in much in walmart as i do in target <laughs> But guess what? I don't care because the amount of money that you spend, you go there occasionally, you get your household items, whatever it is. Um, Sam's in the same accord, man, uh, and, and the charts show it and Target shows it this morning. They have numbers. I was just reading it. 3.7%, I think it was, is what they were down. Target is. Let's see. Yeah, comp sales, which is you know one of the biggest ones, down 3.7% in the three months ended May 4th. The wow. fourth straight quarter of declines. Uh, home goods, furniture, apparel, and food fell compared with the same period last year. And you have to keep in mind that that is uh, with the backdrop of at least some rising prices in there. You know, I'm not sure they're jacking it up. Now, they do mention here that they're actually going to be lowering. They're focused on lowering yes. prices to stop the sales slide, especially on everyday necessities such as food. I mean, how do you do that, though, without <laughs> cutting into profits? So, so I found myself, it's like, okay, that's a nice magic you know, if 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 somebody, if I'm a professor in college and they say, well, listen, sales are going down. So what we're going to do is we're just going to lower the prices and we're going to sell more. I said, well, where, 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 where's the profit going to come from when we're still dealing with inflationary tendencies mm -hmm. across the board? Um, yeah. So they're going to reduce prices on about 1500 products. 
Thousands of more price cuts coming over the summer. Those price reductions will be on everyday products, milk, bread, summer party supplies, back-to-school items. Yeah, I don't know, man. Um, and the market doesn't know either as you're down 8.5%. And, you know, Target's not going anywhere. They'll be around, okay? But, boy, they had, now they're now 9.4% as we speak. They were just trading at 181 in April 1st, and you're at 141 right now. So that's – watch out, man. And I think it speaks to, you know, the, the strain on the consumers. You were talking about the buy now, pay later, yeah. which is pretty interesting. You know, I had seen something recently on that. And what is interesting is that – and it varies, I think, by – some of the providers of those services. But what is interesting is I saw one, and this is just like anecdotal folks, please do your own research. You know, I'm not, I'm not an authority on this at all, but actually one of the things they talk about, and I know it can actually, some of them, they do a soft credit run, right? So it's not on your credit report always like you were talking about. So in one way, it cannot help your credit because it's not represented if you're paying it, okay? So normally if you take out a loan, you pay that loan, you have debt, that helps your credit score. But many times, if you don't pay that back, it can actually come back and hurt you. So you only risk hurting your credit score by taking one. There's actually no benefit to using that type of a service. And as we all know, man, it's it's just another form of a credit card. And it is pretty remarkable that something like layaway, which used to be almost two generations ago, how things functioned, is now roaring back. And, yeah, I mean, how do you not have to report that in some type of credit when, of course, it's a form of credit that you're signing up for? Um, right. It's just basically a loophole that they're using. So, yeah, another another strain. Uh, you know, you can't help, man. Prices, uh, we're forced. And this is, kind of brings me back to what we were talking about, where we were talking about interest rates, right? When I said that Chairman Powell, when he was out there on 60 Minutes many months ago, said we want to get back to where nobody is talking about inflation. I, I we're so far from that point, man. And, so far. and the reason why Walmart is doing so well is because everybody is hyper aware of prices that have continually risen. And when you compound those numbers over three years, it's going to take a very long time yeah. for people to feel like prices have settled and inflation is not roaring because in many people's minds, prices are up. 30 to 40 percent across the board and they are over a period of four years which is which is so that's you know but yeah i, I just said what target on april 1st was at 181 and you're in at 141 well i got walmart was at 60 bucks on april 1st and you're at 65 right now so you talk about a divergence there and and yeah Big and that's time. a that's a fact of the economy for sure and you know you just have this npr poll come out as well um that there's some major, you know, Americans are doing okay financially is what the general consensus was. Um, but there are some major soft spots. So this is child care is significant, right? Two in Ooh. three Americans say inflation has made their finances worse. And one in three Americans couldn't cover a $400 surprise expense. We were talking about uh, the other day how the average American uh, has about $6,000 in credit card debt. More people than ever are defaulting the total credit card debt in America is about 1.3 trillion. And then I don't know if you heard, but I was talking about these new cards that they're coming out with. This is from Avon, um, and they're essentially credit cards tied to, to HELOCs. Okay. Which is, you know, I, I think that in and of itself can run a lot of big risks, especially if more Oof. people have access to that. I mean, those are, you know, kind of high rates. You, you pay on the HELOC loan Regardless, a credit card, if yeah. you do it right, you pay 0%, right? Sure. On top of this, you're paying a 2.5% fixed rate to the company giving you the card. So this is what I'm saying is we, we have these new services that are looking to provide new cash flows to people. Yep. But it's what does those cash flows cost, you know? And it is it, interesting. And I yeah. hadn't heard that. I'll have to look at it. But it's not surprising as they're figuring out probably more ways for people to tack in, tap into the equity of their homes when you cannot refinance right now. You, you know, you can, yeah. but many people are very hesitant for obvious reasons where you're refinancing at 7%. You know, you might have hundreds of thousands of dollars in equity in your house, but your only option right now is really a home equity line of credit because you're probably giving away too much to, to tap in for a refinance. So what are they doing? They're figuring out other ways to tap into that heavy in fees, of course. And, um, you know, the, the, the child care man, Tommy crashed the party. Uh, was it last week when we started yes, to talk yes. about that? Ironic <laughs> timing as he runs through the door. I have to have, I've locked my office door now. He's, he's, he's a fast man. Um, but yeah, that one is pretty intense, man. And I wish the government would do any of this, something because for, you know, it's a shame that early education is just, uh, and let's finish it up after the break if we can. We'll talk some more equities yeah. too, but you know, 
I'm dealing with right now. Tommy's three years old. And it's a shame that really you got to wait until you're almost five. That school is provided when you think about how bonkers that is with early education shaping childhood and allowing parents the productivity to be able to work at the same time. Absolutely. Well, Tommy, I'll see you in the next break. Sounds good, man. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup with Tommy O'Brien. All right, so Tommy, what we were talking about uh, before the last break was something regarding child care, yeah? Yeah, so just talking about in Florida, right? So Tommy's three years old right now. And what does happen, folks, is is kindergarten starts when you're five years old. And so that's when most of the time schools open up. You get free education, kindergarten. You have um, pre-K, okay, which is three- and four-year-olds are in there. Now, what's so crazy is that that's actually not included in many states in terms of early education that's included. Now, in Florida, they have something called voluntary pre-kindergarten education program, but that's only included for four-year-olds. So you get like a voucher of some sort that can allow you to use that to pay for a four-year-old for education. It's just a real bummer overall, man, because then you got three-year-olds, they get nothing. So if you want to send your three-year-old to voluntary, um, to pre-K, you have to pay. Usually it's three or four grand a semester, man. You're talking about eight grand, maybe out of pocket after taxes yeah. to send your kid to pre-K as a three-year-old when many kids go to pre-K um, as a three-year-old. 
And then for some reason, when you're four, the state pays for that. Why don't they pay for it when you're three? You just think about the things that go on, the grants that go out to public companies that go on, um, early education. And then, I mean, what about just tax breaks for families in that accord? One way to cut the ability for that. There's so much you could do. Um, and it's a bummer that somehow that get, gets lost in the shuffle when – it's it's such a growth for the economy in the same deal. It's not just for the kids, which is so important, right? It's like a win-win. You get the kids in good education. That builds a foundation for them early on. And you allow the parents to be able to work to provide economic growth in the same accord. Right. And, you know, unfortunately, the reason why it doesn't get done is because the people who need it most are on the lower economic scale and they don't have lobbyist arms. It's that simple, man. And, you know, it's it's a bummer. But that's the deal. Yeah. And I'm facing it right now. I'm just, you know, as I as I look to some of those possibilities, whatever it is, even if you're talking about in-home daycare, that should be tax subsidized or at least a write off or some capacity, totally. man. Um, and somehow it's not. Anyway. NVIDIA, after the bell, man. We'll see what happens. They got an 8% move priced in. Uh, and where are we right now? Let's finish it up. Where are we with NVIDIA as I pull it up? NVIDIA shares right now uh, trading down 6 tenths percent, almost as high as 948. Thanks for filling in, Jacob. I appreciate joining you, Tommy, man. thank you for coming on. We can't wait till you're back, all right? Appreciate it, man. Folks, stay tuned. We have a uh, 10 a.m. update. Thank you, Tommy. Thanks, Jacob.